A new Ecamm Live Beta 4.3 has just been released, and this is the one that so many people have been waiting for, and I'm super excited about it as well. It's the one with the Ecamm Live for Zoom integration, and this is going to allow folks to do some really quite extraordinary things with Ecamm and uh, Zoom together. And you may be familiar with Ecamm Live's virtual mic and virtual camera, which basically means that all of the production quality that we can create in Ecamm, we can just take directly into uh, any meeting platform, or indeed anything that requires just a camera input uh, and a microphone input because we can select the virtual camera, virtual mic from Ecamm, uh, and then take all of that Ecamm goodness into Microsoft Teams, uh, Zoom, Discord, and all of those different places as well. So what's different about this? Well, this basically just makes the return trip as well, uh, meaning that we can now take the audio from Zoom directly into Ecamm very simply and automatically, in fact. Um, but we can also pull out individual Zoom participants and actually make them a part of the presentation, part of the production as well. Uh, this is something that uh, was not easily done before. And this is the thing that's going to uh, really be of benefit to a great many people using Ecamm. So um, let's dig into that just a little bit. Before we get into the sort of full tutorial, and I will do a full tutorial, uh, let's talk a little bit about the use cases. But before we do that even, I do just need to outline again, uh, or stress once again, that this is beta software. So uh, use it with caution. Uh, you definitely are probably going to want to test this one out a little bit more than you ordinarily would with betas. I've been covering the Ecamm Live betas for uh, the last three years or so, something like that. Every new one, I always make a video about it. Uh, and I always start them off by saying, this is beta software, but I use the beta exclusively day in, day out without any problems. And that is still the case. However, uh, there are a few little uh, quirks which I'll go through with this that's going to mean that before you start using it, um, I was going to say in anger, you won't be in anger, you'll probably be in, in delight. But before you start using it for uh, production tasks, live production tasks, uh, you're going to want to really just make sure you've got fully familiar uh, with uh, the workings of it. And hopefully this video will go a long way to, uh, to help you towards that. I will leave a link down in the description to the place to download the beta. If you are not already on Ecamm Live, you can find a link to get the uh, the free trial uh, of Ecamm, uh, and then you'll be able to access the beta as well. It does run side by side with the regular version, so you don't have to choose between uh, one or the other. Uh, if you do have any comments, feedbacks, feature requests, bug, uh, bug uh, uh, reports, um, then you'll find the link to the Ecamm Live beta Facebook group down in the description as well, and also the Discord for you to uh, chat about these things and also report those things too. So with that said, uh, let's just take a quick look then before we get into the actual tutorial as to exactly what this is and who it's for. And as I say, it does make that sort of return trip. So it brings the video and audio from Zoom into uh, it back into Ecamm. Uh, and if you are already using the Ecamm Live virtual camera and mic uh, and you're doing you know ad hoc calls and things like that, um, then basically uh, this can do that too. So uh, if you're just doing regular Zoom calls, you can still do that with this because it basically just means that Zoom is sitting within Ecamm. And as you'll see, we've got a new window in Zoom, uh, which is uh, where you're going to basically just start your meetings from and, and run things from there. So it can still do everything that the virtual camera and mic can do, but it can do a whole lot more. So for example, if you are doing a podcast, an interview podcast, um, maybe you're doing it over Zoom at the moment, or maybe you want to be able to do it over Zoom so that you can just send out a, a regular Zoom link to people, um, then it's going to be great for that. I literally just spoke at PodFest uh, Masterclass last night. And uh, on that, I was talking about how uh, people still aren't really prioritizing video in their podcasts. And yet, uh, so many more people these days are actually watching podcasts on a live, uh, on a large screen TV, I should say, uh, in their in their living rooms. Um, and yet, I'm still seeing lots of podcasts where the audio is great, but the video version is still basically just a regular Zoom meeting recording of uh, you know a couple of little boxes on the screen, maybe with the uh, the black letterbox style things at the top and the bottom. If there's only two people, uh, you can do so much better than that with uh, Ecamm. And this integration, Ecamm for Zoom, makes it so much simpler. So great great for podcasts. Um, also great if you're doing any sort of panel discussions, maybe at a workshop, maybe you've got a co-host of a workshop and you want to be able to be both on screen delivering it at the same time. You're doing it in Zoom and then this is a way that you can have you and the uh, the guest speaker or the uh, the, the co-host, I should say, actually there in the meeting as well, but also in the production for the, uh, for the recording and for whatever you're spotlighting to your guests. All of this will make a lot more sense in just a few moments. Also for workshop Q&As, so I'll often have a workshop and then at the end, uh, you know, where we're taking questions or indeed throughout, um, I want to be able to bring up the panelist or the participant rather 
onto the screen so that it's captured in the recording the person who's asking the, uh, the questions. So this is a way that you can easily uh, do that rather than relying on uh, screen scraping and screen sharing and things like that, as I was doing uh, previously. Uh, absolute game changer for virtual events where you've got a whole series of people coming up. Uh, they can be in the Zoom uh, uh, event themselves, and then you're just basically bringing them up onto the digital stage. Uh, and there again, for hybrid events as well, where you've got a camera in the room capturing people, but you want to bring people up on the, uh, the stage with them as well uh, remotely, um, then it's great for that. Actually, as you'll go through, as we go through this, you'll see there are a whole load of other use cases that I'm sure will come to mind for you as well. Um, but this is what it's for. It's basically for bringing people up out of Zoom into Ecamm. So what are the benefits of doing this before we actually get into this a little bit further? Uh, first of all, there is the production value. Obviously, the production value that Ecamm gives us, now it's not just one way. We can add that production value to anybody who we want to bring up onto that stage. Uh, there's also the audio routing. Uh, one of the most common things that I have people booking uh, consultations with me about is audio routing. Um, and this sort of solves a whole load of problems for people because it just happens automatically. Uh, another thing is it's a familiar environment. Maybe you've used Ecamm Live's interview mode before, uh, where you basically send somebody a link, they join in the browser, um, which is fine. It works great. Lots of people run entire events uh, on that platform. Um, but this is something that's a little bit more familiar. So people are, you know, Zoom is ubiquitous these days, sending out a regular Zoom invite, a Zoom link, uh, and they can just come and join in. Um, then uh, that's going to be a lot more familiar to them. And of course, it's built on uh, a very robust infrastructure structure with uh, millions if not billions of uh, users on Zoom already, um, then it's got that whole sort of backbone infrastructure in place. Um, and finally, the post-production uh, opportunities that it offers because um, you can get the isolated video recording of all the uh, the participants that you're bringing into your production um, and then you can do a whole load of stuff with it afterwards. So that is just some of the benefits of using this. So um, I've talked a lot about <laughs> the, the benefits and what it can do, but let's actually take a look, shall we, uh, and get some uh, practical hands-on uh, experience with it because what you're going to see when you first start up Ecamm with this new Zoom integration is uh, we've got a new window. Now, if it's not already open, uh, then you'll find that you can activate this. Let me just come into my live demo mode. We've got a new button down on the right hand side and it just says Zoom on it. And this opens this little Zoom window down here. Now, in actual fact, when you first start Ecamm, uh, you won't see that. What you'll see is something that looks like this. Uh, so it says Zoom on the top uh, and then it says link your Zoom account. Clicking on that button in the center there is going to open up a browser window. You'll just log into your Zoom, put in your credentials. Uh, and then once you've done that, uh, then it will uh, change to uh, look like this. Uh, and in actual fact, these buttons here might look familiar uh, because they are the same buttons that you get when you uh, open the regular Zoom app. So let's just take uh, another quick look at that, shall we? So over here, we've got new meeting to start a new meeting. Uh, then down here, we've got join by ID or link. So if somebody sent you a meeting link or you've got the Zoom ID to log into, uh, then you can log in from there. Um, and down here, we've got scheduled events. Um, so that's just going to bring up a list of all your meetings and you can start one from there. And if it's been linked through to your email, linked to your account or whatever, you can start it from there. You'll also notice your avatar here. Uh, clicking on that, by the way, is how you can log out from, uh, from Zoom. So uh, if you want to log out from your account uh, for any reason, you can do that from there. Uh, the other thing that you've got on this window, which you don't normally see on these utility windows is we've got these three little dots just up in the uh, the top corner of the window and that's where you're going to access some of the settings so clicking on here you'll see that it's got a link to the preferences because there's a new zoom setting within the ecamm preferences uh, and we've got some other things that i'll come on to here as well um, and then we've also got this zoom meeting settings let's go through these one by one then so first of all clicking on preferences it opens up the regular zoom pre uh, regular ecamm preferences i should say uh, but as you can see we've now got this added zoom tab at the end and we've got a few different things in here um, let's just run through some of those so first of all auto admit zoom participants um, you may be familiar with the waiting room in zoom so uh, when people call in do you want them to be held in the waiting room or auto admit them so that they can just basically if they've got the link they just come straight into the meeting uh, the default for this is never so that they don't get auto admitted uh, that's what i set my zoom to anyway uh, but you can always change that to either always admit or only known participants uh, on your zoom account to be able to uh, to access the meeting straight away next is auto add zoom participants as ecamm camera sources 
Well, this is part of the key of what this integration allows. It allows you to basically have anybody in your Zoom call as a camera source in exactly the same way as I've got my camera switcher down here with various different cameras. And I can literally just drag and drop one of those cameras uh, over here. And that is a camera source. So I've got all of these different cameras available to me. Um, well, just as in interview mode, uh, you've also got, you know, cameras one to 10, uh, guest one to 10, I should say, in interview mode in Ecamm. And you can basically assign somebody to those uh, uh, those placeholders, uh, you can do exactly the same with your Zoom participants. And in fact, what I've done is I've set up uh, three other different scenes. So I've got this scene with just me in it. I've got another scene where I've got a placeholder camera for guest number one. Uh, and incidentally, uh, to add a new camera in, you just literally drag uh, or click on here, I should say. This will add in a, uh, uh, a new camera and then you can click on the pencil uh, icon next to it and change the video source to guest one to 10 or whatever you want to do. I'll just hide that for the time being. So uh, I won't go through how to create scenes in Ecamm. That's a little bit uh, too basic for this particular video, but there you go. So uh, here we've got one with me and one guest. I've got another one here with guest one and guest two. These are just the placeholder cameras. And then I've got another one if you are going to be doing remote production where you're not actually uh, the on-screen uh, talent. And in my case, I use the term loosely, uh, but you might have one with, uh, you know, guess one and two side by side, something like that. And you might be just off the uh, camera entirely. So I've set up those scenes in advance then. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding in our participants into that. Um, and so what it has here, though, is also add Zoom participants as Ecamm camera sources. So apart from assigning them to a guest, um, you also have the ability to choose if you even want them to be available in much the same way as if you're familiar with a camera switcher, uh, you can choose, uh, you know, which cameras you want to have available. So I can come in here uh, and I can say, you know, remove from the camera switcher. So uh, we can make certain cameras just simply uh, not available to us at all. Well, that's a bit the same with this. If you think when you might well be having a meeting with, you know, 50 people or something like that, you don't necessarily want the camera feeds of all of those people available to you at all times. And so that's what this is saying. Uh, do we want to auto add participants as camera sources? Um, if you have that set to never, you can still manually add them in. And at this point, I'm going to actually stop going through these, uh, these uh, settings here uh, and we'll just actually start a meeting because that will put these things into a little bit more context. So if I click on here and start a meeting, I'm just literally clicking on the new meeting button. Uh, and then I've got a few windows popped up. So I'll just move this one out of the way. Um, what we've got here is the regular Zoom window. So it looks to all intents and purposes exactly like a regular uh, Zoom window. Ignore that sort of uh, tunnel vision that we've got going on at the moment there. That's just because I'm demoing Ecamm. Um, but it's just the regular Zoom window. So that's one of the things I love about this integration is it's not opening Zoom on the desktop, but at the same time, it's just opening the familiar Zoom interface. So it's not like Ecamm have tried to recreate <laughs> the meeting interface themselves. You've still got this secondary uh, window. Incidentally, now that this is open, um, you do also then have in the uh, the Zoom window down here, uh, you have got an option to hide that completely. So if you were doing something which was more of a kind of one way thing, you weren't actually uh, wanting to see the other participants and things like that. Maybe it's a Zoom webinar or maybe you're just doing a, a presentation, something like that. Um, you would uh, have the ability then uh, to sort of show and hide that. Maybe just short of space on your desktop, uh, you can hide that if you need to from there. Uh, they haven't gone to the uh, uh, unnecessary lengths of basically recreating the whole Zoom interface. That's what this window's for. Uh, the one small bit of duplication, though, is that you do have the end meeting button is duplicated in this window. So if you were uh, had that window hidden, you could just always end the meeting from here uh, and also end it from within the regular Zoom window as well. Uh, incidentally, because I am uh, sharing my screen or doing live demo mode, I should say, in Ecamm and recording, um, then uh, there's one little bit of the interface which is missing, which is if I wasn't in live demo mode, uh, you would see down at the bottom here uh, the Zoom link for the meeting that we're currently in. And you can click on that to copy it. Uh, Ecamm just hides that when I'm recording. Uh, but just note that uh, down at the bottom, when you do start a meeting, you could always go and grab the link from there. And in actual fact, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, just grab a link and I'm going to send it to two of my uh, favorite imaginary friends. So let me just grab this link uh, and then I'll get them to uh, join in just a second.
Now that those two uh, participants have joined, I'm just going to drag the main window across. So you can see basically it's saying two people have entered the waiting room. Uh, I can open up the participants window. So we've got all the same windows as you'd be used to with Zoom. I always have the participants window open when I'm using Zoom. So here you can see we've got these two people uh, waiting to come into the meeting. Now, as soon as I click on admit, um, here is where you'll see they've just uh, popped into the meeting. I'll click this one as well. They're gonna pop in as well. So as well as appearing in my Zoom participants list, you'll see also they're in this Zoom window and I can sort of zoom in and out. So as you get more people in here, you can uh, make this window as big or as small as you want. Uh, but you can see here that these two participants are featuring here as well as here. Now, at the moment, bearing in mind that what we want to do is we basically want to add them into this scene for me and these, uh, these two people. At the moment, they're not even available uh, to assign to guests. Um, and that is what this setting here was for. Um, auto add Zoom participants as Ecamm camera sources. That's defaulted to never. Um, but what you can do here, as, as you can see, uh, we can just click on this little add button. Now here is where we're gonna get a little pop-up and, and this is gonna need a little bit of explaining. Uh, let me just read this to you first of all. Um, uh, live streaming capture mode, um, all Zoom meeting participants will receive a message that the meeting is being live streamed even if you're not streaming in Ecamm Live. Proceed with adding this person as a placeholder. So this is relating to this thing here, this Zoom capture mode. And at the beginning, I mentioned that um, this is something that you know has a few quirks. It's dealing with the Zoom SDK and the limitations that that has. Um, and this is one of them. And it's actually, uh, in my view, you know, one that <laughs> that needs explaining uh, and uh, sort of pointing out because um, it can be a little bit misleading. So what is it? Well. When uh, you are in Zoom and somebody wants to either record or live stream uh, your video and your audio, um, then Zoom is required um, legally, I guess, as well as just ethically to say that your the meeting has been recorded so that you know that they are recording and capturing the, the audio too. Um, so whenever somebody hits record in Zoom, the message comes up, it's, there's an audible message and there's a message that appears on the screen as well. And all the time you're recording, there's a notification in this top corner of the Zoom window to let you know that it's being recorded. The same with if you live stream from Zoom to, a, to somewhere. Um, so because we are gonna be capturing somebody's video into Ecamm and we could be recording, we could be live streaming or whatever, um, we're required to then let them know. So you might think, well, why is it that we are saying we're live streaming when we might, totally not be in fact probably likely are not being um, and the default of this zoom capture mode in the ecamm settings is actually set to uh, live streaming the reason is because of and this is one of these quirks of the zoom sdk um, if we set that to recording um, so that it pops up a message on screen for everybody in the meeting saying this meeting's being recorded then um, we would lose the ability to record in Zoom. It's kind of like a quirk of the SDK that if we say that we're recording in Ecamm, whether or not we are um, or not, then it loses the ability to record in, in Zoom. And actually recording in Zoom is a feature that you probably uh, would want to retain if possible, because um, you know even if you are recording a full production in Ecamm, you may well still want to capture a backup cloud recording um, in Zoom, for example. Uh, also, it's a lot easier to share a zoom recording so quite often i'll be in a meeting somebody says hey can we record this so i want to hit the record button uh, and then at the end of the meeting i'm just sending them a link to the to the to the regular meeting it doesn't need to be a full-on production for that um, so there's certainly reasons why you would still want to retain that recording ability um, in zoom itself Whereas um, live streaming, although technically you could do that from Zoom as well, you'll more than likely want to just uh, stream from, uh, from Ecamm in any case. Um, if you are not interested in recording in uh, Zoom um, itself, um, then uh, you can certainly uh, come and change this over to uh, recording instead because it's gonna give a little bit more of a familiar message to people. So let me tell you what I mean by that. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just click on OK. I'm gonna add this person's camera and we just need to perform one more step before I show you what that alert would have actually triggered. So here you can see that we've got my uh, my camera here. I've got this other scene set up with that placeholder. Uh, now what has changed in this Zoom window, uh, I'll come back to the live streaming thing in just one moment. Uh, now in the Zoom window, uh, you can see that uh, we haven't yet added um, Robert here, um, but Jade has been added in. And by the way, these are static images at the moment because of the way that I've got this set up with just imaginary people. But uh, this 
this would actually be a video feed of the uh, of the participant. Um, but what we can do is click on these three little dots you can pop that person out into a separate window. Uh, so I can just pop that up and have that down here uh, to be monitoring. So if you're setting up some sort of uh, live event and you want to have a, a sort of live window uh, to be able to monitor individual people, you can do that in exactly the same way as we can do with the, uh, the camera switcher. Um, if I click on those three little dots again, uh, we also have a source video monitor. So if you've got an individual monitor that you want to put those out to, so this is getting to uh, you know TV production level uh, stuff where you've got an individual monitor for an individual participant. Uh, you can also remove them as well. So if you want to, uh, just as we've added them just now, if you want to remove them, you can uh, select that remove from camera. Um, return them to the waiting room. If you just want to actually kick them out of the meeting completely back to the waiting room, you can do that. I've skipped over this one as signed to placeholder. We'll come to that in a moment. Uh, you've also got a couple of the Zoom controls uh, like ask to unmute um, and then also just completely remove from the meeting as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to assign to a placeholder. And you can see here we've got our regular placeholders, uh, numbers 1 to 10, guest 1 to 10, just as we've got in interview mode. Um, although we have access to guest 1 to 10, uh, just note that there is a limit of eight uh, participants that you can pull out of Zoom. So only a maximum of eight can actually be pulled out of Zoom, um, but you can assign them to any one of those one to 10 placeholders. So I'm going to assign uh, her to guest number one. And magically, uh, she has just appeared on there on the screen uh, right next to me. Um, let me talk then about that uh, message that we had pop up on the screen, uh, that warning, because if we take a look at what the participants are seeing in Zoom right now, uh, they're going to be seeing this. So the participants are in the Zoom window, um, in their Zoom window. They're seeing the participants are just above the top as, as usual. Uh, but if I had set myself to spotlight, for example, um, then I would be sort of taking over the rest of the screen. Um, what they would see at the moment that I actually added Jade in or at least activated uh, the video is going to be a message that pops up on screen like this. And it says uh, this meeting is being live streamed. Uh, this is where I say that it's potentially a little bit confusing for uh, participants when they're going to get this message and they're going to have to, you're going to have to tell them that although it says it's being live streamed, uh, it's not actually technically being uh, live streamed at all. This is only going to be an issue though, when you're bringing people up into the production. If you're just doing a regular meeting, you're not activating anybody's cameras or anything like that, uh, then actually that you, you, this won't be an issue. And so really it's only going to be something that you're going to need to just explain to people when you are doing something that is a, you know, sort of full on production in any case. So it's a, almost a non-issue, but it's just worth highlighting highlighting though. Um, so everybody will get this message. They will also get the message uh, audibly as well. The uh, thing saying that the meeting is being live streamed. What you'll also see is up in the uh, the top corner there, um, it's going to say throughout the duration of the meeting, whilst you've got somebody's camera is accessed, it's going to say that um, it's going to a custom streaming service. Uh, and if they were to click on that little drop down, uh, then it would say um, uh, the, your name uh, and then live on Ecamm Live. So that is the extent of this thing. So this is all to do with um, when we have got Ecamm uh, set to Zoom capture mode is live streaming. If you had that selected, Selected as recording, uh, then instead of that live streaming notice, you would get the regular recording notice. But as I say, you would then lose Zoom's own built in recording functionality. So uh, with that uh, out of the way, <laughs> um, let's just add this other person. Um, and once again, I've got that scene set up with three people, but we haven't yet assigned him to that placeholder. So let's come down here uh, and we will go to uh, assign placeholder and guest number two. So now what folks are seeing is if we were to go back to our meeting uh, and see what people are looking at now, they're going to be seeing this. Now, obviously, uh, this is just for, uh, there's just the three of us in this meeting and we happen to all be on screen as well. Uh, but of course, this could be a much bigger meeting where we just happen to be the speakers, uh, but there could be a whole uh, load of other people in the meeting as well. And if we have set ourselves to spotlight, um, then, uh, then we are going to be uh, the ones that have been sort of spotlighted on everybody uh, full screen. And this is the beauty of this integration is that everybody can be in the meeting the same Zoom room, uh, the same Zoom uh, meeting, I should say, um, but we are then also part of that same production. And all of the audio uh, is being handled as well, so that's all been uh, captured into the recording. Uh, of course, this is all going on in the Ecamm for Zoom integration. We still have all of the other 
uh, functions of Ecamm available to us. So we can still use interview mode. We could have uh, guest number one be on Zoom, but guest number two be somebody coming in on interview mode if we did want to run things that way. Um, you can also be live streaming. So maybe you might want to have these folks coming in on Zoom uh, as speakers or whatever, um, but then you also want to be live streaming to YouTube, to Facebook, to LinkedIn or wherever it is. Um, so that would be an ideal use case, you know, a panel discussion or a, a live stream where people are just joining on a regular Zoom link, but then they're going out to LinkedIn or wherever it happens to be. Um, also, this whole integration is sort of running within Ecamm almost, or sort of like an instance of Zoom in Ecamm. And uh, you can still run the regular version of Zoom on your desktop as well. So you still do have the regular virtual camera and virtual mic available to you. So you could well have a panel in Zoom for Ecamm or Ecamm for Zoom, I should say. Um, and then you could still open the regular version of Ecamm, uh, use the virtual camera and virtual mic into that for, you know, a one way webinar or something like that, where you've got the panel in one uh, and the, uh, the, the audience are in another. So that is certainly um, possible as well. Let's come back, though, uh, to these settings. So what I'll do is I'll come over here. Uh, oh, and by the way, another thing that is very useful with Ecamm is that now these individual participants are literally just showing up as cameras. So uh, these individual people here are just showing up as a camera, which means that uh, we have also all of the effects uh, that we have with any other camera. So we can come down here, uh, change this to participant number one, for example, um, and then we can adjust things like the zoom and crop. Uh, so if somebody's coming Coming in, there may be, uh, you know, slightly the wrong size or uh, wrong position on screen. Uh, then we can do all of those things that we can do with camera effects. Um, maybe it's also touching up the lighting or things like that. Um, so obviously, if you're just sending out a, a link to Zoom and somebody doesn't have a setup the same as maybe you do, um, then you can adjust the uh, things like that to get, uh, you know, lighting and stuff like that. Make minor tweaks to things like that. Uh, you'll notice also um, that we now have in the sound levels, uh, we also have this thing down at the bottom, which is Zoom guests. And we have a, a fader there for the uh, Zoom guest level. Um, obviously, these two are, are a little bit quiet at the moment. Uh, but if they were talking, then we would see the Zoom guest audio come in there on its separate channel. Um, we do have isolated audio tracks as well and isolated video uh, for Zoom guest versus the others. So if you are in Ecamm and you You've got your uh, audio settings and the, uh, where is it now, recording, <laughs> uh, to isolated um, audio and isolated video, um, then it would actually capture uh, their individual uh, feeds as well. So if you did need to do any sort of post-production, then you would be able to do that as well. Uh, let's just, I've uh, just closed that down. Let's open it straight back up, but go back over to the uh, Zoom settings. Uh, a few other things then to go through in here is if we go down to the next one, we've already just looked at that Zoom capture mode. So uh, in short, although live streaming might seem a little bit weird, uh, that's the default and I would recommend leaving it as that. Uh, the, the next one down then is Zoom audio processing. Um, and it says uh, Zoom audio processing is disabled. Uh, Zoom settings are overridden. Now, what that means is, if we go over to our three little dots and open up our Zoom meeting settings, um, these are, as I mentioned, you know, very familiar. It is the uh, the regular Zoom uh, interface that you'll be used to uh, with various different settings. One thing to note is whatever you see uh, in here. Um, where it says speakers and microphone. Uh, technically, it looks like I have the ability to uh, to change these. Um, but when you are just in regular mode with Ecamm, uh, whatever it says here, it is it's basically being overridden and Ecamm is in control of it. In actual fact, what's going on is whatever you have set as the uh, uh, the audio here for your microphone uh, and whatever you have set as your speaker in here, so under the uh, the audio section, here is my uh, my speaker there. Um, it's basically set the speaker to the same as uh, that. So the speaker will be the same as this one. Um, and then the mic, in fact, um, is something called the Zoom virtual mic. And that's working effectively the same as the virtual um, uh, mic from uh, from uh, Ecamm <laughs> going into uh, to Zoom. Um, so just note that, and it highlights it here, if we go back to those settings, uh, that the default here is Zoom audio processing is disabled. Um, there is um, an option, though, um, to enable 
uh, and configure your own profile in Zoom settings. But this is still not actually quite this thing here. It's not actually these things. It's this thing here, the audio profile. Um, so down in the bottom, you've got the uh, background noise removal. You may have original sound for musicians, uh, the live performance audio. So one of the things that is on by default um, is this stuff down here, this audio profile. And actually, if you're familiar with Zoom and the original sound for musicians option, basically the regular version of uh, uh, of Ecamm for Zoom um, is going to um, be using that one. It's going to be using the original sound for musicians option. But if you don't want to use that, if you do want to have the background noise suppression and things like that switched on, um, then you would come into here and you would ch change this to enabled. Uh, and that would mean that you can configure your audio profile profile. And that's these things down here. Now, that is something that you want to be a little bit careful about, especially if you've got uh, music, audio, sound effects, and things like that coming through from Ecamm, because actually uh, Zoom's background noise suppression is so good um, that it will block out you know, all of your music and things like that if you're not careful. Um, and basically, you want to make sure you have that set to low um, if you are going to be playing music through uh, through there. So some people do like background noise suppression for knocking out the sound of, uh, for example, my aircon, which is just up above me here. Um, but uh, they wouldn't want it to knock out their music. So if you are going to um, enable uh, this option for you configuring your audio profile uh, yourself, um, then uh, just make sure that you uh, have this set to uh, low or maybe medium, depending on uh, what, you are, what you're doing. But the default is uh, Ecamm is handling it all for you. That's what you need to know there. Um, the next option down then is related to chat, and I will come back to that one in a moment. Uh, but here you've also got this option for manual audio mode. Now, if you switch manual audio mode, it's going to give you a warning saying that uh, you're activating manual audio mode uh, and uh, that's not going to configure anything for you. Um, uh, and so if I enable that, now, basically, uh, you do have access to all of these to be able to change your microphone, your speaker, uh, and indeed all of this down here. So uh, I think that this might need a little bit more um, explanation. So let's uh, do that, shall we? Uh, and let's take a look at what's going on with the, uh, the audio routing uh, as it is. So let me just come out of my demo mode for a second. Too many things on screen. Uh, let's take a look at the sort of regular version. So let's see what's happening. Um, obviously, we're all integrated, Zoom and Ecamm. Uh, and so the default for Ecamm is going to be that um, the Zoom settings for mic and speaker are basically uh, redundant, so they are not going to have any impact if you uh, make any changes to those. Uh, Ecamm has kind of taken those over. Uh, and instead, uh, what we've got is we've got the audio from Zoom is automatically going into Ecamm, into that Zoom guests channel that we've seen there on the, uh, on the sound levels window. Um, and then what we've got is effectively the virtual mic. It's not quite the virtual mic architecture, but it's still nevertheless the same effect of taking all of that other sound effects uh, of mic, movie, sound effects, and also interview guests if you're using interview mode, and it's passing that then through into Zoom. And again, that option that we just looked at as to whether you want uh, you know, any processing applied to those things is that toggle that we can toggle on and off. Now, you can then, as I mentioned earlier, still be broadcasting all of this out um, to whatever platform. Maybe you're live streaming to LinkedIn, to Facebook or uh, YouTube or wherever. And so all of that audio is then going to be passed out uh, as your broadcast audio to that platform. Uh, so that's the kind of default setting of, uh, of this integration. Um, however, what you may want to use is this manual audio mode. Uh, and so this is the one that uh, I just mentioned, which was over here down at the bottom, uh, this manual audio mode. Um, and what this is going to do is basically allow you to handle everything uh, yourself. And what you could think of this is basically, this is going to be the way that you would have been using Zoom previously. Uh, the reason why uh, you might want this and uh, I specifically requested it is because I still use my roadcaster, And actually, there's some things that I can do with a roadcaster that I wouldn't be able to do with just a simple uh, two way back and forth with audio. So uh, I might want to have a back channel, for example, or uh, control the audio on the roadcaster. So if you are using a roadcaster, 
if you are comfortable with the way that you use that with uh, you know multiple different channels for example um, then you actually probably want to use the manual audio mode uh, and what that's going to do is uh, you're going to have uh, no zoom guest audio so you'll see that uh, the audio isn't going to pass through into the zoom guest channel on ecamm because there are no uh, sort of automatic virtual mics back and forth between those two things instead um, you're going to set things up as you were you would have previously so on the roadcaster we've got the roadcaster main stereo the roadcaster chat the roadcaster secondary whichever channel you're using um, you'll just still follow the same uh, uh, process of basically setting the same channel for your mic and for your speaker in zoom and then a different but same uh, one for your uh, mic and speaker into ecamm that means that uh, your Zoom audio goes out on the speaker channel into the Rodecaster. It's mixed with all your ma uh, mics and sound effects, uh, and that feeds back into Ecamm on the mic channel. Uh, and then uh, your sound effects and things like that from Ecamm then feed back into the Rodecaster, uh, and those feed then into Zoom through the mic channel of, as well with uh, your mic. And Mix Minus is the thing in the Rodecaster um, that uh, that basically stops anything bleeding back into Ecamm and anything going back into Zoom that's come from those uh, directions. So I've got a whole load of other videos on Mix Minus and using Rodecaster, but all you need to know is that if you are using Rodecaster, you've already got it set up, or indeed you're using any other external mixer for that two-way audio, and you want to continue using that, uh, then you need to select uh, that ma uh, manual mode. And then of course, uh, we can take that out as, uh, as broadcast audio as well. So um, with that said, um, I've talked a lot about various different uh, features here, and we'll get back into some of them. Um, I do just want to mention, though, um, that I have got an Ecamm Live Masterclass, and I'm actually completely uh, re-recording it at the moment, and it's going to be available from the 1st of May, but I'm also doing something uh, quite unprecedented, <laughs> is that it's going to be completely free uh, going forward as well. And uh, you may ask, you know, why can this be free? Well, it's because I've got so many other different courses. I've got my Take One Tech Academy and various other different offerings at the moment as well. Um, um, and so this effectively is a way for me to, first of all, give a little back to the Ecamm Live community because uh, everybody's been so supportive of me on this journey over the past three or so years. Um, and uh, also it just then acts as a way for me to uh, present, uh, you know, my courses and people to experience my courses so that maybe they might be interested in some of my other courses like my Stream Deck, Ecamm, uh, sorry, Stream Deck, Roadcaster, um, and uh, Keynote Masterclasses and things like that as well. So that's why it's going to be completely free. Um, you can get access access to it by going to ecamlivemasterclass.com or just uh, scanning that QR code just up there. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll get immediate access as soon as it goes live on the 1st of May. Uh, it's been a completely re-recorded uh, with all of the new Zoom integrations uh, and everything like that as well. Let's just get back then to our presentation, shall we? And let's take a look at where we're up to in those settings. So back over here, then uh, you can see that we've got the manual audio mode. Uh, I would have that switched on uh, you are going to get a warning here saying you are activating manual audio mode ecamm live will not configure zoom audio or mix uh, zoom audio into your broadcast so although it's not mixing the zoom audio into your broadcast because this zoom guest channel will effectively be deactivated you're feeding it in through your roadcaster or whatever now, one more thing that I want to show is uh, what about screen shares? Because obviously you've got participants here. Um, how about if they want to share their content? Uh, well, that's something that uh, is going to be a really easy as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to one of these uh, other participants and I'm going to go over to their Zoom window and just initiate a screen share for a second. And you're going to see on our screen uh, exactly what is happening. So if I just come down to here, click on screen share and I select this window uh, and then activate it, uh, you can see that what has happened is uh, we've now got another window appeared to us uh, down here in this Zoom window, and that is their screen share window. Um, so what we could do is, let's say we want to create a scene for this. I've not created one in advance, so we'll take the three of us like this, uh, and I'm just going to duplicate this scene now, um, but let's say that we uh, just make this slightly different. I'm going to put the three of us over here. Uh, this is not all going to be perfectly lined up, so uh, it will get with my OCD a little bit. <laughs> but if I just bring this one over here now, uh, we can just adjust the size of this. If I can grab the right corner, 
Uh, you get the idea in a minute. Uh, so now we've got uh, uh, the three of us on here. What I can do is I can add in another placeholder camera. In fact, I can just basically just drag and drop one of those. Uh, and let's make this the size of the screen share. So I'm going to change the shape here to a uh, regular widescreen. Uh, and I'm going to change this to guest number four. Uh, or guest number three, actually, sorry. There's the three of us on the screen, but I'm obviously not a guest. Uh, and we'll make that a bit bigger. Now what I can do is I can just come over to this person's screen share, uh, assign to placeholder, and assign this to guest number three. Uh, and there we go. We've got the, uh, uh, the screen share has just come uh, straight in. And if I go back over there, uh, I could even... Uh, adjust the uh, the size of it slightly so that it uh, fits more into view. Um, and then now I'm on the uh, this person's computer, <laughs> imagine I'm them, uh, and uh, there you go. I'm just bringing that feed directly in from uh, their computer, their screen share in like that. So you can imagine that here, I've just got my website up, obviously, uh, but you can imagine that if this was a virtual summit, a virtual conference, whatever, uh, where somebody's got their slide deck, their presentation, um, then you could literally just have this whole thing done like that. Uh, obviously, the way that I do presentations is slightly different. And in fact, uh, you could certainly do something similar. In fact, let's just create another scene. Uh, let's imagine that that was their slide deck. Uh, I'm going to just click onto that person. Uh, I will click on this one to duplicate it. Let's say you want to have them sort of front and center presenting. Uh, you'll just have to imagine for a moment that that is a slide deck rather than a, a picture of a website. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just move that guest up onto the, uh, the top. And if uh, they had been a little bit prepared, um, then you could even have it that their slide deck has a space for them sort of sitting in it in much the same way as uh, my, uh, my slide deck does when I'm on uh, that one that looks uh, something like this. Uh, that's basically what I'm doing with this particular uh, thing here. So uh, I've got basically got a camera overlay uh, and then that's just Keynote running behind it. So uh, that's how I created that. And you could basically do exactly the same effect just as I've done with this scene uh, for that guest here as well. Now, there is one other major um, uh, feature that I need to talk about as well with this integration, which is, uh, as well as the video and audio passing through, We've also got the Zoom comments passing through. And if you are familiar with Ecamm and of course the uh, comment window that we have when we're live streaming, uh, we have that exact same comment window over here now, um, but this applies to the Zoom comments. So if I also have the Zoom comment window open uh, separately, the Zoom chat window, I should say, so now we've got our Zoom chat over here uh, and we've got our Ecamm chat. What you'll see is if I just go over to one of the participants and I'm going to, uh, let me just stop his screen share. <laughs> uh, and what I'll do is I'll, and you'll notice by the way, that now that I've stopped screen sharing, it's just disappeared uh, from here. Uh, but if I just go over to this participant and we just add something into the chat and then we just post that message. Uh, you can see that the message has come up in the regular uh, Zoom chat down here, uh, but it's also come up in our comments and reactions window as well. And it has pulled in uh, their Zoom avatar. So just as with any regular live stream, now we can click on that button uh, and that Zoom chat has then popped up in there. Uh, you've also got all of the styling options that we used to. You can uh, make the uh, the avatar bigger and smaller. Uh, you can adjust the, uh, the size and position of this as well uh, on the screen and make all of those uh, those adjustments. So uh, I won't go into that. That's uh, sort of Ecamm 101 stuff. Uh, but the fact that you can bring in those comments just like that. Now, of course, you may think, well, we've got the meeting chat window open. Do we need to have that one open? Well, if you are not wanting to uh, uh, be concerned with things like direct messages, so obviously you can do direct messages and things like that in that chat, uh, you certainly don't need to have that one open. And in fact, uh, if you want to post comments back, uh, you can still type things in here. So this is a comment from Ecamm or written in Ecamm, I should say. And if I just hit the return button, then that's going to come through from me uh, into there uh, in exactly the same way as this is a comment in the Zoom window uh, or Zoom chat, I should say. I don't know why I need to correct it. It's just you and me here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but uh, you see the point. So it's coming through from you as a user, whether you type it into here um, or directly into the, uh, the chat as well. Uh, and then... Yeah, once it's in the chat window here, you've got all the same functionality as you have with any other chat. So you can favorite things. Uh, if you uh, ask people to ask questions in the correct way that we all know with Ecamm, uh, which is uh, type a Q colon in front of your question. I have a question. 
uh, misspelt again, but let me just correct that. I have a question. <laughs> um, the reason why uh, people ask that in live streams is because you can come in here and we can just do a search for the Q colon uh, and then it will just filter out everything except all the questions. So if you weren't aware, that's why folks uh, say to do that. Uh, and then you can come in here to the favorites. So that's a great way to get the comments coming through from uh, from Zoom uh, up into Ecamm. And I mean, I've left that till right at the very end, but that in itself is a massive feature. So even if you're just doing a regular uh, webinar or regular um, uh, Zoom call, or maybe just a workshop, something like that, you're not even bringing people up onto the stage, um, then yeah, this ability to just be able to bring the chat up in itself is a bit of a game changer. Well, I hope you found that useful and definitely go ahead and download it and give it a go if you haven't already tried it. If you're not even using Ecamm yet, uh, congratulations for getting to the end of this. Uh, you'll find a link to uh, try out Ecamm Live down in the description as well. But also definitely go and check out the Ecamm Live Masterclass as well, because that is over 100 lessons of everything to do with Ecamm Live and it covers of course, the Zoom integration just newly added, but also completely re-recorded videos on everything from audio, video, lighting, but also Stream Deck, uh, using Ecamm for presentations and so on. And if the idea of over 100 lessons of something sounds a little bit daunting, well, one of the things that I've added in in this complete remake of the masterclass is that there are now quick start guides at the beginning. So whether you want to use it for uh, virtual meetings, uh, events, uh, live streaming, recording, uh, we've got a quick start guide in there for you to just get you up and running and then maybe you might use the rest of the extensive material to then go and fill in the gaps. So I hope you find that very useful as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in another video very soon.